Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Bill. <laughs> um, Eric, how does that compare to when we were having it done in-house? Well, uh, that's one of the things we're trying to determine. Um, okay. I guess what I will say is that um, you know, per hour, it's a, it's a you know, it's fairly high cost. Um, what we're looking at now, the, um, the uh, opportunity cost uh, of having staff uh, unavailable to do other work um, and the cost of their time plus benefits plus all those things. So it, um, I, I, the intent was to run it for five or six months, see how it looked. Um, and it's definitely an increased cost, uh, but um, uh, we are planning on doing that assessment of how it compares to um, the wages and benefits for the um, existing employees, plus the additional work that they will be able to get done by not having to be. Rep. I like the additional work component. Uh, I think our town employees have more important things to do than clean the buildings and my impression of when I walk in here from time to time to sign warrants or do other town business, it's a very, very high-end professional job. The place is clean and respectable looking. And frankly, from my personal perspective, it's worth the money. Yeah. Great. Go ahead. Just yeah. what I wanted. Thank you. Question on that comment. And that's what I was looking for in this packet. So. We're doing the fire station once a month. Yes. Seems like very little, but yep. the library once a week. Yep. The town hall three times a week at a rate of $80 an hour. Did this go out like as an ad to say, is there like some nice stay at home <laughs> mom that won? <laughs> I mean, I spent maybe $20 an hour when I was had broken bones and on crutches and stuff at $80 yeah. an hour, three so, times so a week. So that's the, that's not the per hour, that's for the each cleaning. So they typically have between oh, okay. like, two or three people here and they do it and it takes them, you know, an hour or so. Um, okay. So that is per time, but but you're absolutely right to ask those questions. I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to answer that tonight. Really the idea is to try it out. Um, and no, um, we had, um, we've been looking around for local cleaning companies and this was the one in Winthrop. Um, and so for a, a low um, effort trial period, I guess, um, I was comfortable just putting it out to that company and saying, hey, can you come look at this? Can you provide um, uh, uh, some references? And can you give me a, a disclaimer that your um, employees have passed background checks? So we did do that kind of process, but uh, no, it wasn't put out to bid. Um, if we decide to do this long term, I think absolutely we, we should and, and, and really have to, um, because uh, once you get above you know five thousand dollars, it really should go out to bid, uh, and it won't take us long to get there. So because like if we clean Monday and Friday, there's not a lot of foot traffic between Friday and opening Monday. Can we cut back to two days a week? We could. Um, the reason we started with three is because of the winter time traffic and the fact and they basically come in Monday evening after Monday, which is the busiest day we have uh, and clean up and then they come in again on um, Wednesday or Thursday and then um, Friday gets uh, a lot of traffic and they come in on Saturday or Sunday and clean up after that day. So um, it, it really is the trial and if we find that we're over cleaning, uh, we can certainly cut back or as in the case of the fire station, once it starts getting used more, once a month probably won't be enough. Um, but uh, again, um, you're, you're right to ask the questions. Uh, that's part of the reason why we're doing this exercise is to understand uh, what the costs look like and, um, and what the, the benefits might be. Um, last warrant, warrant 35 was payroll in the amount of 20,764 and 53 cents. If you give us a total, I'll make a motion. Oh. Yeah, I'll, all I have is, is it on thirty-three. The cover page maybe inside, Carol. Yes. Yeah, so thirty-four and thirty-five are the warrants that were prepared today. Mm -hmm. So this goes to the yep. item later on the agenda, same day warrants. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So warrant thirty-four and thirty-five is seventy-five thousand one hundred and forty-five. I'll make a motion uh -huh. to approve that. <laughs> um, second. It's been moved and seconded to approve thirty-four and thirty-five. For seventy-five thousand one hundred forty-five dollars. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. I'll also make a motion to approve warrant thirty-three in the amount of thirty-two thousand dollars and fifty cents. 
Thank you very much. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve warrant 33 in the amount of 32,050 cents. All in, uh, any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? 50 cents, not $50. Yeah, it, yeah, I just want to make sure I, that was clear as a bell. Um, we move now to select board communications and communications in general. We have 30 minutes in the schedule for this. Uh, select board communications, five minutes. If you have any select board communications, now would be the time that you can address the public. Okay, I'll just do mine now instead of doing it later under other. Um, I responded to a survey that was sent out, I think, to everybody from someone in Waterville or Somerset County about Brown Tail Moth. And they had a wonderful brochure that they sent out um, that they will send us printed in color uh, for no cost, a certain number of them. Um, it's also in PDF form. Um, in some areas, Ralph has noted, there are no brown tail moths in Reedfield, and then some of us have noted in others, there's anything. plenty. Um, it says the mitigation time, really, if you want to cut these down, which is the best way to treat them, um, is to do it before the middle of April. So my suggestion is that we ask Eric to post that brochure in the messenger and on the website and to request uh, printed copies and have them here in the town office and maybe put them at the library so that people can pick them up unless anybody's opposed to that. Good so. thinking, Catherine. Yeah. It's a no cost way to get information out. It's a timely topic for people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you'll thank yourself when you have less of that rash. So is it okay to ask Eric to do those things? Yes. Thumbs up. Awesome. Cool. Um, let me um, give you, we need that brochure or send me information and I will um... I emailed you yeah. it already, but I will do it just again. In case okay. your email doesn't work. Well, there it's, you go. It's, it's working. It's working. I just might not have picked it up. <laughs> I'm um, sarcastic. <laughs> are there any more select board communications? Sean? Yeah, I just wanted to say it was there was a great uh, winter fun day on Sunday from the rec board and the snowmobile club. Got nice. together and shuttled kids up and down the hill for what felt like an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> it was only two hours and there was hot cocoa and cookies had by all and whoopie pies. It was a, nice. It was a fun event. And the next event they have coming up is the uh, Youth Ice Fishing Derby. And we have had some great support from local businesses, you know, uh, donating door prizes and such. So please keep watching for the flyers and updates and buy a ticket. You do not have to fish to buy a ticket for a door prize. Right. Let that be known. <laughs> let it be known and let it reverberate throughout the reed field land. Go ahead, Ralph. Just like to thank the uh, town crew, such as it is, for the pothole work. Things were really getting out of control and we see it in the KJ that it seems to be a universal complaint, although in Maine you get potholes in the winter, but this has been an anomaly with the freeze thaw and the freezing rain and all the rest. So uh, I think they've done yeoman work and uh, my front end, my front thanks. <laughs> there you go. And I'll build on that by saying that uh, kudos to Matt and to Ben for clearing the sidewalk. Uh, even with an equipment breakdown a couple of weeks ago, they managed to get a plow on it. And uh, it's just been looking really great. And with the warmer weather, we've got it cleared off and people are out there every day. So yeah. great job, Matt and Ben. And uh, just a good opportunity to mention that if you or someone you know watching this uh, broadcast uh, needs help with some sand, it's ice is terrible right now universally. Uh, and those you can you, we can arrange that we can bring sand to you or someone else's home. So uh, if somebody you know needs that, let us know. Call us at the town office, and we'll take care of that because that's what we do. Uh, we move now to town staff reports. We have ten minutes in the schedule for that. Uh, Eric, if you'd like to begin with the treasurer's report for January of 2022. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so check reconciliation was completed uh, through January 31st of 2022. Uh, our accounts are in balance and no unusual bank activity was reported or observed. Uh, with respect to the audit, field work uh, with RHR Smith & Company was completed in January. So uh, now we're just tying up um, a few loose ends and we uh, should be getting some initial reporting back this month. Uh, and I expect to have a full report in March. Uh, which uh, is certainly later than we'd like to see, but again, given the time frame that they started, which was 
um, basically November. Uh, we're, we're doing quite well and um, they're helping get us back on track and get good reliable numbers for the budget process. Uh, retirement, uh, we have been able to make uh, employee and employer contributions uh, to John Hancock since January, uh, which resolved a prior issue that we had. Um, we are you know, now struggling a little bit with um, uh, getting uh, accounts set up for individual employees as far as the online portals. Uh, I can report that uh, as of today, we have uh, a representative scheduled for this Thursday to get that sorted out. Uh, and I think after that, uh, we will be onboarding two new employees that should put to bed all of our, our, our transitional issues with, um, uh, with John Hancock and that retirement program. Uh, and budget, uh, it is fully underway, and we do have a full draft budget available for review and discussion. Um, uh, this is one of the more complicated budgets that um, I've had to work on in the town of Reedfield over the last six years. Um, uh, we do have a lot of uncertainty around uh, a few capital projects and the RSU budget. Um, what we know is that um, we have a lot of upward pressure uh, from all directions, and um, that's, that's being reflected in the budget. Um, general comments for the month of January, uh, we should be around 58% expended, percent expended uh, for the year, um, and we should have about 50% of our revenues available. Uh, receipts are up for both the month and the year to date with a notable increase in monthly real estate payments, um, and that's particularly for the month of January. Uh, and revenues are similarly up for both the month and the year to date. Um, uh, I think those are probably um, somewhat inflated, but overall, uh, I feel comfortable that we are seeing increases that are substantial and, and, and real. Um, and expenses are down for the month um, and the year, mostly related to capital expenses. So um, in aggregate, I would say that expenses probably are up for operating costs. But when you look at the capital, it, it shows being um, things being down because it's a huge number relative to what we've spent so far this year. Um, and uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll just say that I'm looking forward to getting back on track and spending um, money this spring on projects that were approved and um, um, recommended by the voters. Uh, COVID has put us, as you all know, behind a little bit and we're trying to catch back up. Um, so that's my summary for January, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, a few anomalous numbers here. Uh, the one I'll point out is uh, protection is up 1,704% for the month. Uh, that's why we look at annual numbers. If you look at the year to date, uh, that, um, that number balances out and um, we're actually uh, down 1.6% for protection. <laughs> so um, just the, the, the quirkiness of numbers. Uh, that's my report and I'm happy to take any questions. Eric, when you say protection, what is that? Oh, uh, that's fire department uh, Police, dispatching, um, uh, Kennebec County. Um, okay. uh, what we pay for dispatching, Kennebec County is actually covered under Kennebec County taxes as a separate item, but yeah. Does All right. protection also include ambulance? Uh, it does, yeah. As a budget category. Fire, EMS, and um, uh, dispatching are the three okay. core uh, components of that. Trying to give you all the info, Carol. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this is great. Go ahead uh, with your town manager report, sir. All right. So this one I'm going to try to uh, be efficient with because it's two pages and I, I don't think you want to uh, deal with that. Uh, but um, a few really important announcements. Um, town email accounts are back up and running. Everybody is um, situated. Uh, we now have free flow of email both directions. We had some very difficult uh, weeks and months, honestly. Uh, and so I want to thank everybody uh, for their patience and understanding as we work through that. Um, uh, the residents, the select board, the volunteers, everybody um, struggled. And so thank you all for your patience. Um, next, we have some uh, important hiring announcements to make. Um, uh, I am pleased to announce officially that Angelica Pittman has been hired uh, as our collection clerk position. She's also the board uh, secretary here for the select board. Um, and uh, this is her first meeting in this building. Uh, and uh, she lives in Reedfield and has uh, an excellent starting skill set. Uh, we couldn't be um, you know, uh, better um, served. Uh, and she is learning the position very quickly. So thank you uh, and welcome. Um, uh, I'm also pleased to announce that uh, Stephen Kingston uh, has been hired to fill uh, part-time positions for the transfer station and maintenance departments. Uh, and so basically those 
uh, positions uh, combined to make what is essentially a three quarter time position, uh, much less uh, activity in the wintertime uh, and basically full time in the summertime. This will help with our uh, reliance on, um, I guess, intermittent labor from high school kids and things like that in the summertime. Swing man. Uh, he's a swing man. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, he also will be providing backup for um, uh, a vacation time, sick time, all of those things for regular staff. Uh, he's a Fayette resident. Uh, and so it's good to have somebody else um, from another town working at the transfer station um, to represent one of our other member towns. Uh, and the last uh, person I want to introduce is we actually have um, Sarah Miller, uh, who is uh, training to be our AV um, assistant. And, and, and um, uh, she's out back with Bill right now learning the ropes. So um, <laughs> I'm just ecstatic that we filled uh, a lot of vacancies in the last few weeks and um, uh, very much looking forward to moving ahead. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> A voice for me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and so um, I talked about that. Uh, the town office will be closed for President's Day on M Monday, February 21st. Um, and I will be out of the office on the 24th and 25th to do a bit of travel with my wife and kids. Um, so I want everybody to know that I'll be not available those days. Uh, moving on to comprehensive plan, um, we have adjusted the schedule for the comp plan, uh, given the impacts of COVID and the challenges of public involvement over the past couple of years. Our schedule has been pushed out from November of this year to June of next year, which will be the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, and so uh, that schedule will give us a better finished product and much better opportunities for public engagement, which is a core piece of, of that process. And it, it's a community plan. It needs to have good, solid community input. Uh, moving on to the fairgrounds and ball field project. Um, Hannah Flannery is here from the rec committee to talk more about that later, but I wanted to touch on it in my report. Um, we have received wants and needs from all three of the main working group committees. Uh, and those have been passed along to our consultant and will be part of the discussion going forward. Um, I also included those in the select board packet so the board is aware of what uh, we have for basically starting positions on um, discussing this project. Um, next steps uh, are working on group review uh, of the plan um, that's being developed um, in basically two, two different uh, directions. One is the original plan that was put forward, but also we have the, the revised proposal coming from Regina Leonard as, um, as the um, secondary or second consultant that's been brought in on this project. Uh, and we will be having public input uh, basically once we are able to come to some consensus on uh, how to move forward with that within the working group. Uh, the rec board is preparing documents and process work for local and state permitting needs uh, in anticipation of the project moving forward. Uh, so everybody is doing everything they can to be ready, prepared, and proactive uh, in, in bringing this project forward because it is so important and, and has gained a lot of uh, interest um, uh, from, from the public. Um, a uh, placeholder has been inserted into the budget for the upcoming year. Uh, so that step has been taken. So we're able to execute a project if and uh, when, uh, hopefully it's approved in June at the town meeting. Uh, and um, I think it's very important for the select board to stay engaged. Uh, and I appreciate Catherine asking me to continue to put this on as an update item uh, every meeting because that's one great way to do it. So uh, moving on to page two of my report, um, I will stop right now and ask if there's any questions on any of the items I just talked about. Just one, Mr. Chairman, with your permission. Please. Uh, the swing man position. Yes. A uh, thousand hours a year or less. Um, it's 1500. Uh, and I know where you're going with this. Okay. And I did check the ERISA rules. Uh, and and uh, we can talk about that offline, but sure. I believe that we're actually exempt as municipal government for, for good reason, but we'll talk about it. I hope there's a good reason. We'll talk about it. I was now <laughs> very qualified. So, okay. Was I kibbutzing with um, Dennis? Did you do the comprehensive plan update? I, I did, yes. Okay. Um, so basically, we um, I mentioned I'll that we, uh, we pushed the schedule out um, yeah. to be more... Um, um, well, just to, we pushed it out by about seven yep. months. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go ahead, Ralph. And just we're talking about the comprehensive plan. I, I just want to reiterate 
my sentiments in terms of making sure that the public survey is not just a couple of meetings where people are invited to attend. No. There needs to be a mailer. It was my sense after filling in for Dennis at the last meeting that the, the, the planning region was going to provide a list of questions that could be sent out. And I, I feel that's vital if we're gonna have anything resembling a representative sampling that's going to back up the, the assumptions the plan will ultimately present. 100% agreed. Um, and we're, we're on that. We've also requested uh, specific questions from the, the representatives that have taken ownership of the individual chapters in the plan so they can help direct some of that questioning as well. So yeah, we're, we're absolutely um, um, on that. And that's part of the reason for the delay is to give time for that kind of public input. Okay. Keep going, buddy. The hits um, keep coming. All right. Uh, Reedfield Corner Sidewalk, um, um, and, or Reedfield Corner and Sidewalk. Uh, we are still planning on issuing an RFP for the design services for Church Road, uh, Reedfield Corner Sidewalk. Uh, that can be expected in the next few weeks. Uh, so we'll be working with DOT to get that out. Uh, design work is underway for the area in front of the, the um, <coughs> Sonic Hall. And so that's that the parking that we talked about at Redfield yep. Corner. So mm -hmm. that's that's in process. Good. Uh, after the board approved the contract uh, with mainland development at the last meeting or the one before. Um, Streetlights, uh, CMP has completed their portion of the work for us to install the five new streetlights. Uh, there was no cost for that work, which I was surprised by, but yes. uh, they're working to be good neighbors, I guess. <laughs> like um, a good neighbor. And, and we appreciate that. Uh, and so um, they will be billing us for electricity once we have the, the lights up. Uh, and we're waiting on um, light purchase and installation pricing from um, our um, uh, contracting firm, Affinity, uh, who did the original install. Uh, and um, they will not be free, but I will certainly let everybody know <laughs> what those prices are when yep. they come in. Yep. Um, uh, moving on to fire station sprinkler system, we held a pre-bid meeting in January, at which mm. time several questions were raised uh, regarding um, um, the, the type of um, system that was actually required. And so we do need answers from the state fire marshal's office on a number of those questions. Um, and the time frame for the RFP has been temporarily suspended until we can sort out uh, those issues and give exact requirements for the bidders. The last thing you want in any bid process is uncertainty uh, because that would just drive the costs up. Uh, and we owe it to these folks uh, to uh, give them reliable uh, working rules so they can provide us with a system that meets the requirements that we're gonna have to be um, subject to under the state fire marshal's office. Um, so that's, that's also ongoing. Uh, moving on to maintenance and infrastructure. Uh, as as um, discussed earlier, we have had some wild weather fluctuations and that's caused a lot of impacts uh, for the town crew and for our contractor. Uh, and everybody has been holding up pretty well and working together as much as possible. Uh, that issue with the uh, sidewalk, uh, we were able to, to get that cleared up because of collaboration with um, our current plow contractor, also not free but he was willing to, to be there and do the work when we needed it done. So that was fantastic. Um, the um, uh, road posting signs, with this weather, um, things are unpredictable. We are posting a few weeks earlier, maybe even two or three weeks earlier than usual, uh, but that's okay because if the roads are solidly frozen, you can drive on them all you want. And I wanna make that point clear. Uh, this, um, these restrictions are here to protect the roadway is from damage. One vehicle that's overweight that goes on a road that's not frozen can cause hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. So um, it's not about limiting people's ability to travel or anything punitive. We're protecting taxpayer investments. Uh, and you can still travel on these roads, even when the posted signs are up, as long as they're solidly frozen. If you have any question about that, contact me uh, and we'll talk about a way to um, try to move goods and services um, at a time that's workable, in a way that's workable. We want to be flexible. We want things to continue to, to move in town, but we have to protect taxpayer investments. Um, uh, moving on, uh, an RFP for winter, winter road maintenance will be issued this week, uh, and that will cover services for 22, 20, uh, 23. Uh, I did wrap up discussions with the town of Winthrop. Uh, they are not able at this time or, or willing at this time, both of those things, 
uh, to provide interlocal services. Uh, so that was an option that I was hoping could pan out, but um, outside of emergency assistance, they're not available. Uh, so we will continue on with our RFP process for private um, uh, service provision. Uh, moving on to um, uh, several other capital projects, we have RFPs that are um, uh, needing to be issued, uh, but um, uh, I'm, I'm very um, optimistic that with a draft budget underway, um, finishing up the bulk of uh, the appeal process for the safe space meeting house, uh, completing a few other things. Uh, I've got a lot more time to dedicate to project management and I'm looking forward to, to moving forward with here, that. Here. Um, and then I made a note about com commercial cleaning services. Um, they are, and this is the exact discussion we had, um, they've been successful to date. They cost money uh, and we need to talk about uh, whether or not uh, after monitoring this work, the costs uh, and the benefits uh, balance out. Uh, and so um, that's maintenance in general. Transfer station staffing has stabilized for the time being. Uh, and our new uh, backup person will begin training. Um, I said Thursday, but I meant Friday. Um, but this week, regardless, uh, the electronic payment system is still in its initial uh, phase uh, of review, but um, we're expected to have that installed by the end of the month. I did find out today that Karen has scheduled the final training for staff, including the new staff members, uh, for the 22nd of February. So we'll be rocking and rolling once that happens. And Eric, can I just clarify, that will yeah. allow us to use debit cards to yes. pay whatever fees we have at the transfer station. That's correct. Um, there will likely be a minimum. The fees associated will be passed on directly to the person using the fee. They won't be assessed to the, to the to the taxpayers. No, I got you. Yeah. Um, and so it is a fee that is paid by the person yep. using that um, convenience factor. Uh, pay yeah. for convenience. That's right. Um, and then um, we have a solid waste and recycling committee meeting tomorrow, Wednesday, February 16th at 5 o'clock p.m. to talk about their draft budget, uh, which is a big one because it talks uh, it involves three towns and one of our most essential services. Um, Eric, yes. I said on the agenda it was at 5.30 at our normal meeting time. Oh, I probably mistyped it. So um, you 5.30. Put it in today's email, so I'll correct that to I, I stand corrected. I don't think anyone can yeah. make it there who works for five, so. Okay, well, 5.30 it is, um, with Thank apologies. You. No um, problem. Okay, so moving on to um, watershed management. This is an item that um, has been brought up many times at our summer residence meeting. Uh, and um, it kind of is a is a up and coming issue as you look at water quality, uh, environmental impacts, boater safety, and a few other things happening. Um, and so I just want to report out on that a little bit. Select person Price and I have met a few different times with representatives from Manchester and Winthrop um, to discuss interlocal approaches <coughs> to those things that I just discussed: uh, protecting water quality, protecting property values. Um, and uh, keeping our lakes safe and, and um, um, free of invasive plants and so on. Uh, so a few things that have been discussed include uh, model ordinances for um, uh, watershed management, lake management, um, even mooring management has been discussed. Um, we are also talking about the possibility of a short shared conservation or conservation law enforcement position, uh, something like a harbor master or a true harbor master position. This is something that's very new for the state of Maine and very new for interior waterways. One, one idea, I hear Ralph chuckling over here, um, and I know we're going to have a lot of discussion on this. It's not going to be an easy point of discussion, but uh, it's one that we have to have and have to work through. So uh, we will we'll keep going on it. Um, and um, the next steps include discussion with the public um, and watershed association representatives and groups, 30 Mile River, Moronakek Lake Association, Coppicey Watershed District and the like uh, to get their input um, because we, we, we continue to see issues and we need to look at least whether or not we want to address them. Uh, so that's my report uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. Oof. I'm appreciative of you doing this. I think I've seen Angelica taking some notes and I think this is really important information that's bringing us up to speed on all of these projects that are ongoing and aren't the things that we're considering just tonight in our regular business. So yeah. 
Um, if it's we need to make item. that a 15 or 20 minute mm -hmm. item on our agenda, we should do that in the future because then we won't be off schedule. But yeah. Good how, how long was that, Catherine? For it's, it's it's like under 15? under yeah. 15. Yeah. With, with treasurer. Okay. We're okay. we're here. We're cuddled. We're we're snuggled in. <laughs> okay. Um, Eric, I have a question for you. <laughs> sure. Um, could you tell me quickly, along with it's not li listed here, but could you say where the new uh, street lights are going? Um. They were included in the last uh, town manager's report. Um, and I believe- at the fairgrounds crossing? Uh, one at fairgrounds, yeah. At the loose road. The fairgrounds crossing. Tell me what, is 17. that the entry? Just across from the weather vane. Okay. Where yeah. the crosswalk is across the fairgrounds road. Okay. And at loose road in 17. Loose and 17. And then it's the end of out on the church road. I'm um, going towards Belgrade. What road is that? Oh, Wings Mills and Wings Mills and North Road. And North Road, yep. Um, at the top of White Elvins at Pea Ridge and Lane Road. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Okay, everybody, where's the last one? It's in the report. <laughs> it's in the, I just, hey, listen, I just wanted to know. It, right? It's like, it's a great thing. Last time we realized we're saving so much money. I think it, it you know, it's just nice to, that people know that adding these lights is not going to kill us Go oh ahead. actually um it's um gordon um um gordon road and 17 and also planes i don't believe um uh, loose actually is going to have a light there yet okay it's planes and 17 and gordon and 17. okay, okay. there you go planes and 17. i was just gonna gordon. look in the minutes but okay. i don't need to thank you go ahead ralph <laughs> wings mill at north road yeah that's Pretty remote. Is there sufficient traffic out there, given the residential development, to really require a light? And what purpose does that light solve? Is that a safety? Position? That's a quality. Is that over, a safety? It's quality issue? over quantity, Ralph. Um, the quality of the visibility there is horrible, okay. um, and there's speeding. So Sean, yeah. go for it. Yes, yeah, so, so someone that has to drive that. This is the guy who could day. tell me. Man, <laughs> when you go down north yes. before Wings yep. Mill, yeah. you've got that big. You got that big slope. If you're right. coming, you hope to catch some sort of something coming up that hill, and that light is going to drastically change nighttime driving through there. I okay. Think. It's kind of here, like here. Lane Road and P Ridge. That's another yeah. not high traffic area, but we did have a fatality there, and in both of those cases, it's where a road comes to a T end yeah. with trees across the street and all there is is a stop sign. And people travel mm. those and they're unaware that it comes up on you so quickly and boom. Yeah. Um, it's a blind hill. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. I think it sounds good to me. Anything else here for the report? Because we have, we have a ton of uh, minutes to, yeah. Um, excellent. Uh, anything else? Thank you, Eric. We appreciate it. Uh, we uh, have 10 minutes for uh, boards, committees, commissions, and departments. Um, the first one is the Fairgrounds Recreation Improvements Update. I, I assume that is why Hannah is here. Um, and so uh, we'd like to do that um, now and give uh, Hannah a chance to tell us about this update. Um, I did prepare some things to say so that I would keep on track. Um, so I may repeat a few of the things that Eric included in his report as well. Uh -huh. um, but just kind of a timeline update. Um, on the 10th of um, January, the select board approved the work with land, uh, the landscape architect and mainland. Um, on the 26th, we did a site walkthrough with Regina Leonard, the landscape architect. That included all the stakeholders and representatives from the Rec Department, Trails Committee, Conservation, the Historical um, Cemetery Committee, and also Eric Dyer himself. Um, the walk through, in my opinion, was not ideal uh, as we were walking around on what trails there are in this hardened snow um, on a 20 degree afternoon with the sun slowly setting. <laughs> we get the picture. Um, having everyone um, be able to communicate and share information amongst the group, which would have been ideal, um, was pretty difficult. Um, and from the rec perspective, it seems that other parties were trying to like redesign the whole project as opposed to kind of like communicating with the landscape architect on how she could facilitate um, what we're ideally looking for in having a nice space and also the field and basketball court included mm -hmm. in that development. Um, on the 7th of um, 
February, the rec department met um, with our monthly meeting and um, we're working towards having a finalized project proposal in writing um, and also a finalized planning board application. Eric mentioned a little bit of that. Um, but then uh, under recommendation, we also paused the planning board application um, to account for input from the landscape architect and any design adjustments. So that's kind of on hold right now. Um, on the 10th, Regina followed up the landscape architect and she is working to put some things together so that we can follow up and have a stakeholder meeting and keep moving that forward. Um, after uh, December, our last meeting where everyone was together, and I did not write the date down, I was trying frantically to find all these dates, but I did initiate an application for an Alphon grant um, just to have that in process. Alphon grants are usually funded only 50%, but in the course of the cost of this development, um, I figured why not put the application out there and get some funding if possible. So that's gonna, I'm gonna work to finish that application. There's a lot of numbers and things needed um, from the town to fill in all that. Um, the 10th of February last week, I was contacted by Travis and Karen Magnuson who are coaches for the high school basketball team and also help us run our youth basketball programs. They run a summer camp. Last year, they ran it jointly at the Y and at the court here at the high school. Um, the middle school and high school gyms are getting resurfaced or reconstructed. It's one or the other on either of them. As soon as school is out, um, Travis and Karen were hoping for an update on the basketball court. I couldn't really give them that at this point. Um, uh, so they're actually forced to run their summer camps the last two weeks of school not ideally from three to eight at night because they don't really have a facility hmm. without having to pay a lot of money to use other facilities um, for that purpose. And then also as part of an update, um, as we look forward to baseball and softball season starting when the snow melts, we know that could be anywhere from the end of March to the end of April. I mean, it is Maine after all. Um, we are looking to help um, Malvern and maintain their fields um, so that we can jointly work and have that as an extra field space. All that is to say, um, I just hope that we can keep this project moving forward because it's long overdue. <laughs> so that's my update. Thank I'm you very much. Go ahead, questions. Carol. <laughs> I have a question. The site visit you guys had, how long were you guys there? Do you know about? About an hour. Because when I'm looking at um, the landscape architect, we got billed for five hours for a site visit at $135 an hour. And I'm like, there's no way they were there for five hours on January where there's snow looking at landscape and our little, I just like. We did walk all around the trail. We did, but it, it wasn't yeah. five hours. The, the, yeah. the five hours, um, um, and I can check with Regina, but that is probably about right for prep work and then follow up work. Um, so she, um, and she did stay after everybody left and took more pictures and did more um, more review. Um, so as for, with consultants, you typically pay for not just the time spent at the site, but the prep work and the, the follow up work. So okay. I can call uh, her and just confirm that that's what that was for. But um, I, I, um, I saw that number too, but it, 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 when you're dealing with consultants, it's not unreasonable to, to pay for everything. Okay, um, I just like yeah. it, which is such a small little area with very simple projects. You just go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. What more for Hannah? Great update. Thank you for coming back with progress. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, it's thrilling to hear that you have your planning board materials, you know, basically all together and just waiting to put the finishing touches with the new details that are coming out. Yeah. Um, so impressed. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hannah, can I just also ask, you've been, a lot of people have approached you recently since, since Cash had his media attention for his donation, and some other people have been talking about matching, sort of continuing to help with that. Where are we at with trying to talk about how to accept those donations and stuff? I need to meet with Eric and figure out how to, how to do that separate from our other funds so that the, we know exactly what's coming in for fundraising. Yeah, um, we'll meet um, sometime later this week or next, and we can take care of that. 
I don't know that it's a possibility, but do you know if anyone's talked to Kent Hill School about using their basketball courts for a couple of weeks? Mm -hmm. I don't. I know that was discussed last year. Obviously, it was a different time last summer, um, but I. Right. Yeah, I know that. Like now? You like mean, for general public no, use, you're talking about no, 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 just the, to run the basketball that camp. Basketball that they're camp. Try and There's do. a cost involved. They're not free. Okay. <laughs> I'll just put it like that's all I know yeah. basically yeah. about that. They're very Pricing. COVID. Uh, like the skiers cannot go mm -hmm. into the lodge when it's like yeah. single digits. Right. But it, that would be after school is out because they leave before we leave. Okay. Um, and they do have summer camps there. But I just, just didn't know if they might. We've, we've been developing a different relationship. So I didn't know if that okay. might be something that. I'll be happy to um, facilitate that as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, like we're getting ready to build one. We just need this one right. time. Yeah. Can yeah. we get a reduced rate maybe, you know? Anything else for Hannah? Go ahead, Carol. Can I just, um, in the budget, it like parks and recreation is just like exploding. So is that this project like $500,000 worth in the next fiscal year? Or is, or is this like something else That's that a, I'm not aware of? Eric could tell you about that. Yeah, I was going to so, say. So that, 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 is the, that is the current placeholder for the project um, based on the initial engineer estimates. Um, over the next couple uh, weeks and, and month, uh, we will get much better understanding of what that cost is. Um, for the high end of the project, I think that's probably reasonable. Uh, that's why I'm really excited about hearing about the Alphon yeah. <laughs> application. Okay. Yeah. Go um, ahead, Ralph. So in terms of exploding budgets, uh, the, uh, there's a combination of operating and capital. And the exploding part is probably the capital expense for the yeah. development. But operating, I assume, is holding its own and in line. Fairly stable, yeah. Um, and okay. it, it is the operating, it's the, it's, or excuse me, it's the capital expense. Um, and we can talk about that more when we get to it with the okay. budget. But just wanted um, to make that distinction. Yeah, um, but, but that, that's part of a bond that's being proposed. So it would be bonded over multiple years, but we can talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. We're good, right? I think so. Okay. Hannah, thank you very much. I appreciate you thank coming you, in. I also think that this is a very important project that we know that Reedfield is growing and we're building capacity. Uh, and I know there are a lot of basketball players and, and young girls that play softball who'd love to have a place to go. So thank you very much. You. Uh, we get the budget committee meet minutes of January 27th, the planning board minutes of September 28th and November 3rd, the library board minutes of January 5th, and the broadband internet committee of November 10th. Uh, 2021. So that was a while ago. A lot of these are a while ago. Um, uh, any questions about those minutes? Anything that we can do? Should we just go ahead? They're, they're listening to Ralph. Just nice to see them. They're, 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 they're coming in. They're going to continue to come. I love it. Um, we, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, yeah, but that's all right. like the planning board one was from September. The previous meeting we had in October. So is there, and, and the one that just posted today was the very controversial meeting after something that's so hot in the community should have been like out there. Is there a point within which we can expect, especially that board to like be caught up? Like, is there a plan to, I mean, we were like going backwards in dates now. Yeah, no. Um, so, so this was the, a part of that process. Mm -hmm. of also having um, a full staffing at the town office to provide that support um, uh, with, with Angelica, we also have um, a, a backup person now available to take minutes if, if she's not available. But um, it, it's a, it's a multi-part thing. But yeah, uh, we, we need to do better and we, um, um, we're working on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can tell you, like for the broadband committee, um, they didn't meet between November and the end of January. Yeah, and most so people we were still under off, the old yeah. thing of waiting for it to be approved before they were sent in. So when we meet tomorrow night, I'll make sure that our secretary understands to send them in as soon as possible. Draft minutes are accepted. Yeah, okay. like the next day. I mean, especially two. that board is such important stuff going yep. on yep. that the community is concerned about or, you know, curious about. Look Can I? We're all taken up for you. Go ahead, Carol. I'm sorry. No, that's One okay. Ask what the, you anymore, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if this is budget or library committee, but the 
payroll situation there. So I'm assuming when the librarian was hired, it was for a part-time position? Yes, uh, and the hours have, have not uh, changed for that position. It still is, I believe, 30, 24 or 30 hours a week. I don't recall which. It might only be 28, but it's, it's, um, it's less than 30. But there was something saying she's approaching full time, so now we have to do all benefits, including retirement. For for a library that's open twenty hours, so uh, I and, I don't understand what's going yeah, on. So, so that's what uh, Ralph and I were talking about with Arissa, which is um, a um, a federal employee or requirement that that um, certain employers provide health insurance or provide retirement okay. options for employees over a thousand hours. Um, I've done some some research on that, and I believe that um, that we are exempt from that. However, we have been paying retirement for uh, Melissa for the past several months um, since we initiated the new program. Um, so it would be challenging for us to, to not do that. Um, but I don't believe that we're obligated to at this point. But Ralph probably disagrees, and he'll talk about Ralph, it. Ralph, go ahead. Well, I do disagree, at least as, as far as the part-time position for the library is concerned. And I raised that issue a long time ago. Mm. Uh, you have a public employee who's working over 1,000 hours a week. Federal law requires, Arisa, Arisa law requires that that person is eligible for a pension benefit, black and white. And I believe when we started our discussion to develop the new pension plan document, that that was confirmed. So that is why you see uh, a provision being made for a retirement benefit contribution for the librarian, because she's working over a thousand hours a week, a year. Thank you. <laughs> a thousand hours a year. Okay, a thousand I'm just- hours a year. That's the standard. Uh, I'm just saying, I'm not agreeing, disagreeing with that at all, but I'm not sure why, um, What is this? Is this is this about the minutes? Yeah, kind it was of. In the library All of minutes. that. Okay. It's in, All right. I just want to make so sure we it, stay. The library is open twenty hours. Minutes, so we're talking apples and oranges here. So so we're open. I think twenty hours. Um, there's several hours uh, per week of um, a time for cataloging and doing other other work, um, and so um, the the budget that we're working under. Um, is developed was developed and, and um, approved as part of the, the budget process uh, and it does include a fixed number of hours for the librarian um, and then we added this um, um, additional benefit um, in conjunction with the new retirement plan uh, when it came into effect okay i'm just saying it seems that it would be downtime during those 20 hours in our little library to catalog or do i don't know i'm just yeah, it's a good question for for either Melissa herself or for the or the board. board. Yeah. Okay. Thank yep. you. Yep. Uh, okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Well, I think I don't know if we have to. Do we don't that really. Have to. Yeah, we, we don't have, have to, to, but I appreciate it. Just move us along. Yes, I don't. I, I'm, I'm, I think we great yeah, I think we've got their receipt. In yes, thank you. Fashion. Yes, and and we know that moving forward, all of the boards are getting used to uh, submission of minutes. That's uh, a little bit quicker. Uh, now's the time. There's no one here, but we would we say if you want to do public communication, now is the chance. If there is a public ghost, there's no one here. So then we get to appointments, reappointments, well, and we do have Michelle Megan. Well, Megan is here for her appointment, okay. I would assume, unless you want to say something now, Megan. You're more than welcome. <laughs> You're on mute. So it's, I mean, I, you know, you can, you can just keep talking if you want, but we won't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, excellent. So we move item 22100, consider the appointment of Megan LaChapelle to the Trails Committee. Um, your uh, information, the information is in the packet. Uh, in case you missed that, but uh, former park ranger, for goodness sake. Uh, so uh, I think it's great. Um, and how long have you lived in Reedfield? I've been in Reedfield 11 years. Um, my husband is born and bred in Reedfield, Marina Cook graduates. So we live n very near the fairgrounds. So my family and I have used the trails quite a lot um, right. over the last few years. So I've gotten very familiar with the trails yeah well i figured i, I was going to ask you know you, you if you like to go the outdoors these trails are pretty good anybody have anything before we appoint megan 
Um, I'd like to thank you for volunteering and you bring a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I guess you heard a lot tonight about the ball field and, and um, the trails is involved in that as well. Um, so that brings you, helps to bring you up to speed. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to appoint Megan LaChapelle to the Trails Committee for a position beginning today and going through 6-30-2024. Second. It's been moved and seconded to appoint Megan LaChapelle to the Trails Committee. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you for your service, Yay. Megan. We appreciate it. We will not take offense if you decide to cut out of this Zoom. <laughs> well, so, yeah. I have all children at home, so I kind of need them to bed so yeah get out of here you got it thank you very much yes ma'am thank you thank you all right and merrily we roll along we have 30 minutes for old business uh 218068 consider the next step for investigating broadband internet we have 10 minutes set aside for this uh let's go ahead and find out from Catherine what's happening well, we can do this in less than 10 minutes. Good. Oh. Now you can start. <laughs> then then Bro, show so me. Broadband uh, committee is meeting tomorrow night, and we'll have more to report after that. That's really the update. Uh, so the WKLCBA uh, disbanded this past week because we figured that we had really met our purpose, which was to come up with um, to research and develop an RFP and to receive back uh, proposals to have a multi-town solution to broadband. And what we came to realize is that there is not going to be a multi-town uh, solution. And there may be a smaller group of towns that get together. Uh, basically, we ended up figuring out that Wayne, Mount Vernon, and Reedfield all have quite a bit of cable. And the other two mm -hmm. towns do not have any. And so the solutions will be vastly different um, so those three towns that have some cable um, may end up doing something together, but that'll be something that we decide uh, more on a, uh, an individual town basis rather than through the group at large. Uh, we were just kind of spinning our wheels trying to figure out how to make something work with everybody and it, it wasn't going to happen. Um, and Eric uh, was going to find out there's going to be a small ending charge to that. Uh, Reedfield has likely contributed enough money to cover it, maybe not. So there'll be a small ending cost to that. I mean, like under a thousand dollars, nothing large. Um, and we had already approved funding for that. So we're all covered. Um, so basically now it'll be up to the Reedfield Broadband Committee to decide which avenue to pursue and with which company. And um, that's one of the things that Eric is planning on having the committee take a stronger lead in having actual committee members being in contact with the various um, groups that gave us bids and uh, some or at least one who hasn't. Uh, and so we'll have another report in two weeks for you. Is that good? Good. Thank you. Um, Three minutes. I, 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 <laughs> Catherine, can I just ask a question and maybe sure. you'll know more after your meeting, your but if you are, if you, I, I know it's Dennis thing, if, if, if just to clarify, what do you think are going, are we going to be able to realize the goal of, of the original goal of being able to get fiber optics internet to every home in Reedfield? Um, we absolutely can do that if we're willing to pay the price. Okay. Um, if we do that, that will be something that will be happening just in Greenfield. Okay. There's no other town now who's going to consider doing that. And that's okay. Um, that was always known as a possibility. No. Um, so it'll be up to the committee to present the different options after okay. we look at them. All right. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, you. But Ralph, absolutely. And there may be a distinction to be made if I understand this process. It may not be fiber. We're looking for high-speed internet, regardless of the delivery vehicle. Yeah, right? exactly. Right. Yeah, understood. Yes, originally just, it was fiber to the home, right? Yeah. And then there's the option of it just being high-speed broadband, and then there's the question of reliability of delivery, um, the complexity. Do we want to own the system versus having a like a public-private partnership where we pay part of the capital cost? and the company pays the other part, or uh, do we just 
say, do something similar to what we're doing now, which is where Spectrum pays all the cost, and then you're just beholding to them for whatever. Gotcha. Um, and so that's whatever a, a point that can be negotiated also. Okay. So those are really, we're still in the same position. We're just there by ourselves. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good. Uh, I appreciate that. Very nice job. With a whole lot of information that was money well spent to get. So good. We're in a good and place. we wouldn't have gotten it without that. Right. Uh, we move to 22089, discuss fiscal year 2023 budget. Uh, we have set aside 20 minutes for this because it is dense. But luckily, uh, we have Eric here to help us navigate this document. Uh, and we turn things over to him to help illuminate this um, robust document. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Um, yeah. <laughs> so as I said, this is one of the more complex budgets we've had to deal with, um, in part because of all the things that have happened over the past two years. Um, money has come in, money's left. Um, we've had um, big changes in the amount of funding we're receiving from the um, uh, state of Maine. We've seen changes in the amount of money coming in from the RSU. Um, uh, one of the biggest things that I'll start off with is at the end of the, of the last um, budget process, uh, the school, the RSU, uh, did basically return about $175,000 um, from money that they had originally said they were going to need back to the municipalities as a result of um, better funding from the state of Maine. Uh, and so that went into our reserve account, and that's now coming back out to offset increases in the school budget, um, only in part, from what I understand, because we do have um, uh, probably uh, anywhere from 6 to 10% increase in this RSU budget. Um, and so we've, we've kind of uh, right now uh, taken the middle road and looked at about an 8% 8, 8 increase. Uh, and that would be for the Reed Field portion. Um, and that brings up one other point. Uh, and that is that uh, as we develop and change as a community, um, we're actually doing quite well. Our property values are increasing at a higher rate than the communities around us. That's, that's good because that means we're, we're, we're thriving as a community, but it also means we pay more for things uh, that we share with other municipalities like uh, education. Uh, so because our values are going up, we're, we're ending up having to pay more. So when the RSU budget goes up 8%, we might end up going up 9%, um, just as our share of that. So that's, that's something that's important. Um, that also has an effect uh, on uh, our overall, um, uh, the money we get back from the state of Maine uh, through um, um, the uh, homestead exemption. Uh, and that's another point that I wanna make is that we are looking at doing another adjustment to uh, taxable value uh, in order to stay on pace with the state of Maine valuation and to actually capture that full um, uh, I think it's like two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar return that we get from them for keeping our assessing up to date, uh, and so um, that uh, we are looking at another ten percent increase across the board, just like happened the last two years. Um, COVID doesn't give us really many choices on how we do that. Um, it, it is what we essentially need to do in order to maintain our our position with the state. Um, Accordingly, if we if expenses stayed the same, um, our mill rate would go down and the tax impact would be neutral. Uh, but we already know that's not the case with the school budget. Uh, and it's also not the case with the town budget. We do have increased expenditures in several areas. Uh, we've talked about a few of the capital projects already. Um, uh, the, right now, we're looking at a, a $2 million bond that would capture three projects. One would be the... Um, ball field project at 500,000. Uh, another would be uh, a, new, a new fire truck, um, the importance of which we saw uh, on Sunday uh, with the first real fire, well, not real fire, they're all significant, but uh, a full multi-town, uh, full alarm fire um, that we had to use a lot of our equipment on, um, on Sunday. But in any event, um, those big fires come up and we need the equipment in place to, to respond. Uh, we're looking at about a $500,000 fire truck. Um, so that would have to go into that um, as well. Uh, it was on schedule for this coming fiscal year. 
Um, we'd already actually pushed it off one year. Uh, I did talk with the fire chief. We may be able to push it off another year, but um, with the current year budget, we're only paying interest uh, because of the way the cycling happens with the debt service schedule. Money is cheap. It's going to be a bit more expensive in March. And by the time we get to bond bank borrowing in the fall, it's going to be more expensive. Go out another year and it's likely going to be much more expensive. So we have to do some balancing of whether it's worth uh, um, you know, having a little bit more of an interest payment in the first year uh, or whether we want to try to get a better um, uh, pay, a, pay a higher rate and reduce that payment by a little bit. So that's just another component of this is that fire truck. The other component uh, is a um, best guess placeholder for broadband internet at a million dollars. Uh, and I chose that number because we have uh, one proposal that's right in the million dollar range uh, and, and one that is in the couple hundred thousand dollar range uh, and two that are in the four to five million dollar range. And I'm expecting that we're probably going to settle somewhere in the million or less range. But again, the next two weeks to a month are going to be very telling in what our options are. Uh, and then again, um, in order to be able to actually realize this project, we have to have the, the funding mechanism in place when we go to June town meeting. Um, and so we don't want to forego any options by um, saying, well, we're not going to put any money in because we don't think we're going to need it. Um, that's not really uh, an option or, or a direction that I've heard from the select board or the budget committee. Um, but if it is, we do have a joint workshop coming up for budget. Um, and so I'll ask the board members, um, just as I did to the, the budget committee, uh, to, to spend some time over the next two or three weeks. March 3rd is the... Um, is the joint workshop that we have uh, to talk about budget. So um, uh, dig into that stuff, uh, look at it, think about it. We'll be giving you a lot more information as it becomes available. Um, so that's capital. Uh, the other area that we're seeing large changes is with the cost of, of, of labor. Um, we, we know that we've uh, increased um, uh, with hazard pay. We've budgeted to maintain that increase and to also um, uh, conduct the usual um, uh, annual increase for um, cost of living, which is I think 2% as has been negotiated. Um, and so we're seeing rising costs for, for labor, not just in the wages, but also uh, in the cost of insurance, the cost of retirement, the cost of health insurance, all those things. Everybody is dealing with that. We're dealing with it too. Um, so in summary, um, our budget is being uh, driven up by, by those items. Uh, there are a lot of small changes here and there in the budget. Um, generally, they're trending upward. Right now, the way things stand, we have a, um, a mill rate uh, that will result in an out-of-pocket cost to taxpayers that is essentially identical to what it was in 2015 uh, and very similar to what it was in 2020. Over the past eight or so years, we've fluctuated right in this range um, for, for our residents. And some years were down, some years were up. Uh, we've actually been down from where we were in 2020 for the past two years. So we've had two years of, of, of lower tax rate uh, and we can't do that forever. This is a year where I, I feel that um, we need to be increasing that impact. But again, the out of pocket impact is the same as it was seven years ago. So I think we're doing okay. And that's municipal budget. That's that's everything. That's it. including the school portion and the county and the county. Wow. Um, so that's amazing. I I, yeah. I, I, I wanted to, to tout that point, but also say that um, you know we, we um, with this budget we have done a lot of deliberation. Uh, the budget committee has been very active, uh, and we are also looking at investing in our community in ways we haven't before. Um, we've added money uh, to outdoor recreation, both in um, uh, fattening up, um, to use that phrase, and I really shouldn't, uh, the Land Conservation Fund, uh, because $10,000 doesn't buy you anything. Um, if we want to preserve a property like the one that's been converted to a solar farm, you need a half million dollars. And, um, and we won't have that for 
uh, 50 years at the rate that we were saving. Um, and then it'll cost three million. And then it will cost three million. So <laughs> if, if that's a priority, which is showing to be, we need to invest in it. And the same thing with the ball fields uh, and the same thing with the internet. So uh, that's really my summary. We're investing in our, in our community. We're investing in our staff and our people um, that realize these things for us. And we're investing in uh, those other programs. So that's my summary. Uh, and I'm happy to take any questions on this. There's a lot there, a lot of moving parts. And um, yeah. I'm glad I'm not on the budget committee. Go ahead, Ralph. Speaking of things that move, fire trucks. Yes. Um, I think $500,000 would be a bargain with my past experience in buying these things. Um, I, would, I would ask the budget committee and you to look at the possibility and weigh the cost options of deferring for another year as long as the chief is comfortable with the serviceability of that pumper vehicle mm -hmm. uh, and make a sizable budget allocation to the capital non-recurring line to offset the purchase in the next year and weigh that against what the final purchase balance will be yep. and what the interest costs would be if all of a sudden you were to say, put a hundred thousand dollars down against the purchase of that, yep. I, I think that ought to be explored. Yes. Uh, just because I think there may be an economy of scale there because I don't see interest rates are gonna go up, but they're not gonna go up astronomically. And if this town were positioned to make a sizable down payment and budget for that capital chunk this upcoming fiscal year without, an enormous impact on the mill rate, perhaps there's your offset uh, yeah. that, that gets you the vehicle you want without additional expense. Are you talking about a down payment with capital a non recurring with a you, company or no, just in no, budget? you just you just bank okay. that money yeah. and you earmark it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I just like to say, in observing how the town has function for the past three years of my experience. We, I believe we have worked arduously to try to keep the mill rate stable, but when it had to go up or had to go down, it did not spike. So you're not seeing a high and a low and you're whipsawing all over the place. And to do that, the town has made judicious use of its undesignated fund balance to mitigate increased budget costs without jeopardizing the town's surplus position so when an emergency happens, we can't deal with it. And I'm assuming that the budget committee is taking this into account. And from what I understand, the fund balance, uh, because of the last couple of years of judicious management, is rather healthy. So uh, there may be an offset to any mill rate increase there without depleting the fund balance. Uh, there may still be some marginal tax increase, but it doesn't have to be full freight because that fund balance can offset some of it, even with some capital non-recurring set-asides yeah. to mitigate good, yeah. the out year. That's exactly how we approached it, Ralph. Okay. Um, so that, that that's um, that's a, a good observation. Um, and so we did look at um, the school is a great example. We knew that that the school was going to go up. Um, is they've been very good to us? Yeah. In the last couple of years. Um, and so we put that money aside that was um, raised through the overlay, essentially mm -hmm. the way the taxes were were were, were levied, um, and that went right in the bank. And now we're drawing it out so that we can cushion. Uh, and we're doing the same thing, as you mentioned, with, with some of the municipal expenditures. So um, that's exactly how it was approached. Um, the budget committee has been very good about taking that um, seriously. And uh, that's where we are with this budget. Right. Yeah. The budget committee does incredible work. And so when I when I think about, um, you know, the, the amount of, of discussion that has to go through and, and they, they always do a great job. Anything else? Go ahead, Carol. I yeah. had one thing. Um, there was it something about the fire truck about a donation from Massachusetts and that's off the 
off the table said something about donation had not moved forward i'm not sure what that answer yeah means. um so that was um uh, that was reported in the budget committee minutes um and the fire chief uh we we are always working with um other municipalities, particularly in the um, um, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, wealthier communities. wealthier communities. I mean, that's just the right. way to put it. Wealthier communities. That's what they the, are. Their used equipment is is, is um, some of our mid range um, uh, to, to let's give it twenty more years equipment. Um, uh, but unfortunately, with the um, the department that we were working with on that fire truck. Uh, um, donation, uh, it's it's stalled. The chief hasn't been able to make any progress. Uh, with COVID, everybody's had impacts. Um, they might just be holding on to it longer than they were originally planning. Gotcha. But that one, uh, unfortunately, at this point, that may change. But at this point, isn't an option for us. There is one tiny thing in the budget minutes about the animal enforcement officer. Yes. So it was a salaried position. Now it's not. Well, but, uh, it's, it's opposite. So it was. Um, so it it was uh, a. It was associated with a full time position. Right. Being associated with full time position under the union contract, any time that there was a call, they were guaranteed hourly wages, uh, which I have been disappointed with and, and frustrated with since the very beginning. Um, and I've let many people know that, including, um, anyway, um, <laughs> including <laughs> Ralph, uh, it, 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 it is currently a stipend position. It's a well-funded stipend position. I believe it's 2,500 or 3,500 a year, um, for, um, the number of however many hours it takes to respond to calls. Um, and so because it's no longer associated with a full-time position and it is a purely stipend position, we're no longer obligated to pay a stipend plus hourly wages, which in many cases were overtime automatically because of the time of day, the weekend calls. So we're in a much better position with that. Um, and I very much want to keep it that way. Um, I object uh, across the board to both stipend and hourly payment happening at the same time. I think it should be one or the other. So that position is stipend? Mm -hmm. Is stipend. Okay, because yes. there was a note, like uh, words in there that said resulting in no stipend pay. And I was like, well, so, that might need to be corrected. That's not please. Right. <laughs> I, I was like, so he's not getting calls at 11 o'clock and 2 a.m. for nothing. Yeah, no, he, it's he, he, getting he will get crazy. paid. It will just be a stipend. So gotcha. it's no stipend pay for hourly um, for hourly response time. And does he get mileage because he's using his own truck? Uh, he gets a stipend. Stipend is intended to cover the cost of the time, the equipment. Um, we provide personal protective gear. We provide cages. We provide, um, we pay for the contract with the uh, animal shelter. So basically um, they get paid, um, we provide the town cell phone. So really uh, it covers mileage um, and the time to respond to calls. Okay. Training too. And, and um, well, um, we, we pay for the training. Yes. Yeah. Oh, training, that's the thing. Does he get paid for that? Cause it's a week long. Uh, no, there, there's no week long training for animal control. Um, Unless they're going to the hundred hour police academy, which we're not, um, we're not going down that road. Okay. Um, do we have any other budget questions? Because we will need to finish up or yep. extend the meeting. Um, yes. Which so we're going to do anyway. Yes. Um, I want to talk about uh, new business. We have fifteen minutes for this, but I, I, I we can't, we can't do twenty two one hundred three yet, right? Anyway, uh, twenty two one hundred one is consider pending real estate foreclosures. We did not discuss this in the executive session. No, and you shouldn't have, so thank okay. you. All uh, right, yeah, good, okay, gotcha. And we did get an email update. I don't know if anyone saw it yes. today. Yes, that okay. one of them has been eliminated. Yes, and let me grab my Which sheet. Which means paid. Eliminated in this case is good. Yes. Good, yes, it, we it like that. It is good. Wow. Uh, let me see, just one second here. Oh, here we go. So um, we actually, this is, um. A tough subject every year. It's it's um, difficult uh, for us as a community to try to uh, grapple with uh, folks that that um, are unable or um, uh, having difficulty paying their taxes. Uh, it's important to know that these taxes are uh, three years out, um, three years past due. So this isn't um, you know um, this year's commitment. This is three years ago. Um, that we're trying to collect upon. Uh, and so um, 
uh, you know, the, 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 the silver lining on this is that this is the smallest number of potential foreclosures I've seen in my six years here. Um, that's a, a good thing. Um, it means that um, uh, people are, are having more resources available to them um, and they're being more proactive. Uh, and I even mentioned in my treasurer's report that we're seeing increases in the monthly payments. We're seeing decreases in the penalties being paid. Those are all good trends and in good directions. Um, that being said, we still have, uh, um, we had eight, we currently have seven properties um, that net may be foreclosed upon um, for various uh, unpaid balances. One of the things that I do as treasurer is go through and um, try to work with these folks to and track tax collector uh, to, to help them get these things paid. Um, uh, the staff are excellent. Um, Kristen, Teresa, uh, and Angelica will, will be getting involved with this as well. We all work <laughs> together as a team to try to help people get through this and get, get those taxes paid. Um, there's always um, a small group of folks that, that run it to the very last minute um, and then pay up, or there are a number of these um, properties that have uh, liens uh, held by banks. Uh, and so um, typically what would happen is the bank would step in and pay the taxes. Um, so uh, given the work that's been done um, in the town office to help these folks get their um, uh, taxes paid, uh, the discussions and phone calls that I've had with individuals and also with some of the lending institutions that are um, uh, involved with these, uh, we, out of this list of seven, we have one that we haven't been able to reach yet that is potentially um, uh, a foreclosure. Uh, and they were here three years ago uh, in a very similar situation. I went to their home in Hollowell. We talked to them directly uh, and helped them get through this. Um, that can work once or twice. Um, I'm not 100% optimistic that we're going to be able to do something like that this time around. And so um, part of our due diligence is to inspect the properties that we think may be subject to foreclosure uh, and make sure that there are no liabilities for the town or that if there are liabilities, we're aware of them. Um, the select board does not have um, the ability to, to waive a foreclosure. It's an automatic process. It's mandated by the state. Um, and as treasurer, um, I, I do have an option um, you know, several months prior to um, dismiss something for an acute environmental hazard. Think um, a Superfund site. Uh, but outside of that, there really is no way to, um, to avoid foreclosure because the expectation and the obligation is there that other taxpayers don't bear the burden of people who aren't able um, to, to pay for property that they possess. So we have this process. Um, and so we're, we're, we're getting towards the end of this. We have about uh, two weeks left. Um, I'm gonna continue to reach out to this individual that, um, that I think we, we is most likely to be um, foreclosed upon, uh, make every single possible effort to avoid that outcome. Uh, once that happens automatically, the property owner does have the ability to enter what uh, we call a redemption period. They can pay not just the taxes that are due from three years ago, along with the fees and penalties, but to pay all three years to get them up to date so that we can avoid in entirety um, having to deal with the situation again for, for at least three more years. Um, and that's why I'm so concerned about this one, because that's what we did last time. Um, once that happens, they can redeem that property during that 30-day period. If that doesn't happen, the select board then has some discretion on disposition of that property. The select board can keep the property and use it for municipal purposes, uh, which is one of the recommendations I put in, um, given the nature of the property, that it could be in a wonderful conservation property. Also, we could sell it. Um, and we have options for how that's done. Um, in the past, when we foreclosed, we've done it once in the six years I've been here and we foreclosed actually on a bank uh, because they had so yes. many foreclosed properties <laughs> that they couldn't keep track of them. And all that money went into our property tax relief fund. So we do try to use this money judiciously. Uh, but the, the select board could also um, um, sell that property. I recommend very strongly that if that's the case, that we use a realtor. Um, nobody benefits from a, an open bid process, except for the guy that paid $2,000 for a property that's worth 80. Um, and everybody loses out. 
so um, that's where things stand. That's the direction that we um, are headed in. Those are some of the possible outcomes. Uh, I'll have a much better idea and I'll give another update when we meet again in two weeks or 13 days. Thank you, Ralph. If we were to get to that situation where the town did end up selling it, mm -hmm. is there like an escrow period for the property owner to come back and redeem the, 30. the property and reimburse the town with interest? There's no, that, that is the redemption period before, prior to. Prior to. So yeah. when, when the town <laughs> takes this step, that's it, it's over. That's it. it once, okay. once it goes to the, 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 the select board could choose to, to sell it back to the property owner for a discount. That's something that you, you, you could consider. <laughs> um, that select, gets into some questions about process and um, the fairness. The board did that once a number of years ago. Yeah. Um, it was given back to the property owner for full payment of taxes, all fees and legal fees. Okay. So that is because option. there was a compelling case, and it was yeah. that was that's a public proceeding at that point. That's not a private um, mm -hmm. executive session thing done. Yeah. Because that's town property. And, and you would want to balance the risk of going through all of this cost and effort again in two or three years. So that's, but that's um, but that is an option. Thanks. Anything else for the foreclosures? Very well, 22102 is to consider financial warrant policy. Go ahead, Catherine. Um, I'd like to make a motion to, um, I'm not sure exactly, so someone fix this when I do it wrong, <laughs> to extend the meeting for five minutes um, to handle the end of regular business and then to hold an executive session to finish the work that we began at six o'clock and invite the town manager to attend. Second. All right, uh, it's been moved and seconded to extend the meeting by five minutes uh, and then go into executive session for a personnel matter. Uh, is there any other discussion? All in favor? Very well, thank you. Um, let's go ahead and discuss the uh, financial warrant policy uh, and then we'll move forward. So very quickly, um, this, this has been an issue that we've been, um, I guess, evolving into. Uh, as the nature of our meetings has changed um, in large part because of COVID, um, but also as we, we uh, moved away over the past several years from having meetings every two weeks, whether we need it or like it or not. Um, and that was an easy thing to do when we had uh, meetings on a regular rigid basis. Uh, we've added flexibility, which I think has added value to the, um, to the process and the ability of staff and the select board to um, you know, meet on a schedule that makes sense instead of one that's imposed. Um, but um, a lot of our financial procedures need updating. Um, and I'll start by saying I would like to uh, recommend that the board consider an overall revision to this in about six months. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but for the time being, I think, I think that it's important for us to recognize that um, same day warrants can be difficult given the schedules and time commitments that we all have. Um, so to give ample time for review, we already on a regular basis review warrants off cycle. Uh, we have three members sign and then we report out those results at the next meeting. Um, so by um, allowing for a little bit of extra time, um, it would give us Monday, Tuesday, maybe into Wednesday for select board members to review and sign the warrants. And then we can report out on them uh, at a later point. So the only real change wouldn't be the level of review. I think that might actually be improved by allowing more time, um, but it would be the, the timeliness of the reporting. So instead of being um, same day as happened with this warrant that we just approved 34 and 35, it would be at the next select board meeting. Um, that information is still publicly available at the town office, uh, but I think this would be a good change um, if the board is willing to um, give some flexibility um, and, and just change that process to reflect more of our current needs than the way things have been. I think being flexible is part of what the board does. And I certainly think that you, you, you know, one policy does not fit all boards. Um, so I, I think I'm all for this. I'd like to review this, but like you said, I think we have some time to think about it. I'd like to make a motion um, to direct the town manager to revise the disbursement warrants, municipal warrants section to reflect current practice. 
and that we review this policy um, after July 1st, 2022. Mm -hmm. A second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, empower the town manager okay. to um, uh, <laughs> rewrite this and take a look at this policy as well as uh, take a look at the future of this. Uh, are, is I there meant, any more discussion? I meant the whole policy, not just yeah. the little piece. Right. There. We we got for, you. For the July thing. We got you. Go policy ahead. review after July. All in favor? Thank you very much. Um, excellent. Um, yes, we are done officially with that meeting. Um, but are we going to go downstairs for the executive yes. session? Um, so I would entertain a motion to, we're done with that meeting. Do we have to go into executive session now? Yes. Yeah. Um, that was Catherine's well, we motion. Go downstairs. We, yeah, that yeah. was her motion. We will enter it, it would be helpful yes. if you reference the statute section just for the record. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, do you have and, it? It's at the top yes, of the- Yes, I can do that. Yeah. And do we- um, we won't make any decision there. Are we going to reopen the meeting at the end to? Yes, technically we have to. Okay, so we will hold a public meeting for about a minute afterwards. Do we need Bill to wait around for us? Um, I think it might be best to table that until the next I was, meeting. Yeah. If I had to make a recommendation, not knowing what. We're um, going to meet again in February. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we won't have any decision made in the meeting. Yeah, I think that Cleaner would be best. Everybody. Yeah, I think that okay. would be best. So I'll make a motion to uh, hold an executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters, specifically an annual review of the town manager pursuant to one MRSA section 405 subsection 6A. Is there a second? Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to do just that. Um, is there any more discussion? All in favor? All right. Oh, and invite the town manager. Can yes. we add that in? Yes, yes, invite the town manager. I was gonna manager. come in anyway. We need, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna do this downstairs. I think it's best if we take our stuff because then Bill can start to break down. Yes.